folks, welcome out to the completely double playthrough with me, Dr. Ben GFM. Now, we've got ourselves a bit of a conundrum, folks. We don't know at this stage in our in our season, what, what is this now? It's the eighth game coming up against Hull in the League Cup. We don't know what our best team is. So I don't really know how we're supposed to rest players for the games against Hull. We're playing two games today then, Hull and West Brom. West Brom in the League, Hull in the Cup. And we need to figure out, before we go any further, what is our best lineup. Now, obviously, we've brought Angola into the side, and he's been a regular fixture so far. But form, as you can see, has been win one, lose one, win one, lose one, especially in the league. It's not been good. Our Champions League form, obviously, very, very good, and we'll continue that next time against Real Madrid. But what do we do? What's the solution to the problem? Do we stick with what we've got? Do we try and rotate? Of course, we've got a league game coming up. But is this our best team for the upcoming league games? Kevin De Bruyne is nearly back to, well, nearly back to fitness. He's finally started training again, uh, which is good news. And I may even start him in this game against Hull today to get him some game time under his belt. We won't play the full game, but to give him sort of 50 minutes, 60 minutes might be worthwhile. Emery Chan's going to come in uh, for Nangolan as well to play alongside Jordan Henderson. Mohamed Salah is going to come in for Mane. So we're going to make a few changes. I'm sort of deciding this on the fly. Uh, Karius is going to get the start. I'm going to say, actually, if Karius keeps a clean sheet against Hull, he may well start the uh, the Premier League game as well. Uh, Sacco is also going to come in alongside Van Dijk for Matip and uh, Williams, who's actually been complaining a little bit about a lack of first-team football, is going to also get his game today. I think that, though, is going to be what we settle with, unless we go with sort of Andy Carroll uh, just, just to give Origi a bit of a break, but I'm not sure really. Agro start injured and will be for a few more days. We'll miss both games today, in fact, but may well be back for the Real Madrid match. Do we give Andy Carroll a go up top? Slightly different style. Uh, why not? Target man attack. We'll see how he gets on. Of course, we can bring on Origi on if needs be. We'll pop him on the bench instead of... Do you know what? We won't play Hart. We'll gamble with a lack of a keeper. So, let's see how we get on then. Obviously, there's a few other boys we could have played today in a League Cup game, but... Actually, Trent Alexander Arnold probably the only one. But we're going to try and keep it relatively strong out there today. And of course, the only change that's really going to come is when we probably bring Lalana on, actually, for Kevin De Bruyne at some point. You can see De Bruyne. He could play. He can play. They're recommending 45 minutes, and that's probably about the amount we're going to give him in this first half. And we'll see how he gets on then. Right. We need to get ourselves a win, and we need to get back into form. With the games coming up against Real Madrid, it's not the only tough game we've got. I think West Ham comes after that, and then Chelsea, and, and a couple of other tough ones uh, shortly after it. So we've got to get back in form before it's too late, essentially, folks. And against Hull in the Cup, this should be the ideal game to get back into form, you would hope and think. Uh, they're playing a 4-1-1 formation. Ojoa plays up front for them, of course, formerly of uh, Brighton and Leicester. I'm just quite interested in that. They're, they're quite deep here, so this could be a bit of a problem for us. The instructions are on the other uh, position, as always. Uh, I'm going to get aggressive as well. A, a team such, of our, uh, such as ours should be winning without any problem at all. And I'm going to keep the aggressive mindset up. I want them to know that I'm not very happy with recent form, and I want to see some goals scored. Now, we are starting with Andy Carroll, which might be a risk, um, but we'll see how he gets on in today's game. We'll skip this sort of pre-game interlude and get straight into it then. Hull uh, in, in the orange and black. Quite like the Hull kit, actually, for some reason. I've always liked orange and black as a combination. Nation. Uh, we're, of course, wearing our famous red. Now, can Kevin De Bruyne and Andy Carroll prove to be a bit of a nuisance for this whole back line? I guess we'll have to wait and see. Carroll, not the most mobile of strikers, but again, very good in the air. And with, with us playing wingers, or at least one side wingers, we should be okay. Salah goes through. Shot uh, saved by McGregor. And a decent early start from the boys. Not too bad at all. Of course, at Anfield today. So, a home game in the Cup should always be, I always feel like, should always be a bit of a win. Um, I guess we'll see if that's the case. As Andy Carroll charges into Ryan Mason, it's nowhere near the ball at all. And Jack Grealish, who Hull apparently signed uh, with it there, Huddleston's obviously going to be their, their key man. It's whether we can get close enough to him to stop him dictating play. And so far, we can see he is dictating play. We may well need to close down on him a little bit more, get tighter to him. As the show goes through, the shot is wide. In fact, well, do you know, we're not going to waste any time on this. We're going to try and work on Tom Huddleston. We're already closing him down a lot. Let's mark him quite tightly and tackle him hard. Show him onto his weaker foot. Let's give him... Oh, blimey, I messed that up. Oh, no. Oh, no. No, no tackle on that guy. He's a left back. Okay, we're going to try and give Tom Huddleston... A difficult game. I think he might be the kingpin. The problem is, of course, we've got Kevin De Bruyne out there, who's not been fully fit recently and probably isn't the ideal candidate for that. But, oh, a mistake. And Bill Locator's through on goal. One-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper. Chips over him and makes it 1-0. Ten minutes gone in the game. Liverpool won hole one. Uh, sorry, Liverpool won hole nil. And it was a defensive error at right back. I'm not quite sure who it was. You'll see that it was Harry Maguire making the mistake. Keita drives through then. He's got Carroll to his right-hand side, but goes alone. Great finish, too, over the over McGregor in the uh, whole goal. And it gives us the 1-0 lead. 20 minutes gone now, and we're still in the lead. Hopefully, then, that will be the start of what should be. Hopefully, two or three. I'd like to see us score a few goals in this one. Obviously, we did quite well against the, uh, the Danish side in the Champions League. I'm hoping we can do a similar thing today. Get a few on the score sheet. Get the confidence up of the team. 
heading into a, an important Premier League game. Crystal Palace defeated us last time out, so we've got to try to stop that from happening all over again. And uh, hopefully, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm going to sit here and sound confident that we will be able to, but recent form has not given me that confidence, I'll say that much. As the time ticks away, I think we've got Huddleston on a yellow card. Hopefully he's becoming frustrated with the, uh, the, with the job we're trying to do on him a little bit. And then well, the good thing for us is Kevin De Bruyne has stayed relatively fit, hasn't got an injury, and is going to get a nice 45 minutes under his belt. And there may well be another goal before this half is over. And Ray shan has got it at his feet. And he's going to he's going to travel forward and left footed shoot wide. And Ray, not, the, not your best work, is it? As uh, surely that will bring us ever closer to half time. One standard fluid, so... We've played quite a passive game so far. Well, it's not going to be us to half time. There's going to be another chance in this. And this is going to go by way of Hull City. They're, uh, they're working around the back. Huddleston there again. You can see still dictating things. I mean, he's, he's playing a slightly deeper role for Hull. So he will be on the ball slightly more than the other midfielders. But I want us to really give him a problem. Win the ball back in those areas. And there we are. Sacco gets it on him. And all of a sudden, we might have another chance. If he can set Keita free on this left-hand side, we certainly will. De Bruyne working things a touch here into Emre Shan. He's got Salah on that right-hand side. He's got the overlap if he needs it. But goes back inside to De Bruyne, who finds a ball out wide to Alexander-Arnold, whose ball into the middle is good. And Andy Carroll, he's back in a Liverpool shirt. And he's scoring goals. His first of the season. This is the sort of game you want to play, Andy Carroll. You know, a bit of a battering round against what is quite a big hole back line. Harry Maguire is quite a big boy. I think so putting Carroll next to him was a, was a smart decision you can see there Carroll right footed volley from close range and uh, there we are then 2-0 looking good and then well this first half is never going to end apparently it continues here with Chiesa is there going to be another goal or is this going to be a wild shot which doesn't go anywhere near the goal that's that's often the case I find uh, as Henderson's got it into Emre Can into Salah again so De Bruyne whose final action of the half is to score a goal Kevin De Bruyne is back and finally in Liverpool red gets a goal and I mean what a goal it was too one of our finest strikes we've seen this season Salah lays it off to him about 20 yards out and a strike wow my word top corner as well into the back of the net. That's going to be his final action of the game and it should wrap up the victory uh, even in this first half stage. Lovely stuff from us in the first half. Really good performance and uh, nice to see Kevin De Bruyne getting a goal at the end as well. He comes off then for Adam Lallana who gets a, a piece to play in today's game and uh, as we enter the second half then hopefully it's quite routine. Not much goes on. I'd quite like quite a defensive performance actually. Clean sheet will do me nicely. And I did say of course if Karius keeps his clean sheet then uh, that will be game over for Joe Hart as far as the league's concerned. Karius is going to get his start. Salah pulls it across towards Carroll and it's cleared as far as Van Dijk. Finds Henderson in the centre. Moves it on to Keita. Who strike on goal. Finds the back of the net and there it is. This is what I wanted, folks. This is what I mentioned at the start of the game. I wanted to see a bit of a romp from these Liverpool boys. Not in that manner, folks. Uh, but I wanted to see lots of goals scored, and that's what we've had so far. 4-0 to the good. Do you know what? We'll skip the highlight. We've seen we've seen some nice goals today. That was just another one. You know, we've, we've seen so many of them as uh, the time is ticking down here. Then 65 minutes on the clock, and Hull haven't had a shot on target. We've managed to shut down Tom Huddleston, who I did think would be a problem for us. No, it's Henderson struggling a little, bit for, a little bit for fitness in the middle, so we'll bring Wijnaldum on for him. And uh, he's had a good game as well, an 8.6. Kato on a 9.4. Andy Carroll up top. I mean, we'll keep him out there for the whole game. Struggling a little bit now, but gets himself a goal. I mean, who saw that coming? And there we are then. That is going to bring us, I think, to the end. There's a minute remaining. It ends with a free kick for Van Dijk. But that, my friend, should be that. And a 4-0 win. That's what I'm talking about. That is the sort of game to get us back into form. And, uh, well, I mean, that's a foul by Jack Grealish, isn't it? And that's a bit naughty. But anyway, the fans are going wild. The 4-0 is complete. And we move on to the next round of the League Cup. Of course, a competition that we won last year. We are the holders of that cup. And I'm hoping to win it all over again. So, into the Premier League game we go now against West Brom. Only a few days' time. We'll see how fitness is going. Uh, we're going to give every player that played there a day's rest as well. This is something my friend Mike The Space has been encouraging me to do. And I actually think he's right. It's quite a good thing to do. Especially after the game they've played. Just to, just to give him the rest. You could, you could do it for a couple of days. But we're just going to give him one. As uh, I do want a few of them to play in the next game against West Brom. So let's see. How are we looking in terms of fitness? Last time out, I mentioned there. I don't know if you saw that. It was quite brief. But they lost 5-2 uh, to Leicester. Now, if they're losing 5-2 to Leicester at home. Uh, a home match at Anfield against them. Should... In theory, in theory being the key word, be a doddle. So we'll see if it is a doddle. Uh, they're in 15th place this season. I, I can't say too much, though, as we're sat in 11th currently, not having the best of years. Uh, so hopefully we'll turn that around. There's a draw just happened there, and I completely skipped it. Swansea, though, at home, 
as uh, Mamadou Saka, who just started that game, wants to have a word about why he's not playing, I'm going to tell him that Van Dijk's very good and he's going to have to be patient. A lot of games this year, though, for people like Saka to get involved in, as uh, Sergio Aguero is slowly but surely getting back to fitness. The, the De Bruyne-Aguero partnership should be hopefully arriving very soon. Right then, let's make a few changes uh, at the back. We've been Klein in. Although Alexander Arnold does a fine job, you've got to say. Players like Nungolan, um, he's had a good year so far, but Emery Shan did quite well there as well. It's difficult now. Well, suddenly we're in this situation where we've got some players out there doing quite well for us. What do you change? I think because Kevin De Bruyne's been a little bit... Actually, now we'll do the same thing. We'll start De Bruyne and then maybe make the change l later on. Uh, Firmino is going to come in up top instead as the complete forward uh, instead of Andy Carroll, who drops down to the reserves. And I think that's all we're going to do. I might give Williams the start, you know. He's done a pretty good job. 7.34 so far. Klasnak not had a similar performance. 6.7 for him so far this season. Not very good at all. So, um, yeah, let's give him a chance. Why not? Let's, let's give him a go. I mean, actually, Alexander-Arnold. We'll start him as well. He's having a much better time of it compared to Nathaniel Klein. Playing slightly weaker opposition, but the man's in form. Giving the opportunity. And the same goes for Saka, actually. He's playing well too. 7.4 rate. Opposed to Matic playing a little bit poorer. Um, the only change really then is this Nangolan switch. Now, do we bring him in? Frem Ray Shan. I am going to, I think. I think he's a slightly better player, and that's what we're going to do. Mane's also going to take a step out. We're going to keep Salah in there for this one. Uh, Kieta, of course, on the left-hand side, as always. We are favourites for the game. I'm just going to see. Look, these boys have played well in that last game. Why take them out if they're playing so well? Give them another chance. That's. I'm going to try and put the team on form a little bit more this year, because when you make big signings, it's very easy to get sort of lulled into this sense of, oh, you've made these big signings, you've got to play the big signings. Well, if they're not performing, then I'm not going to waste time playing them. And uh, we'll see how we get on then. West Brom, Premier League. If you bring up the league table, you can see we've been struggling no end. Three losses so far this season. It's not been the greatest time of it. Um, but a home game against West Brom should be the tonic to get us the win. You can see from the league table, it's not too far apart so far. Chelsea and Spurs have got a bit of a leap on everyone else. But if we win a few games in a row, we'll pull it back slowly, slowly but surely and be in contention once again, I'm sure. But you've got to beat teams like West Brom and Jarbium if you're going to do that. And... Speaking of West Brom, here they are. But it's tackled by Alexander-Arnold. Salah now is, uh, is challenged, but keeps the ball under his spell as Firmino gets tackled by Callum Chambers. Just falls to the ground, which is never ideal. Uh, Sacco gets in there, though, and cleans up the mess. Gives it to Williams, into Henderson now. And can we work an opening? Out to Keita in this left-hand side. Got a little bit of room to manoeuvre. Gets the ball into the middle. De Bruyne's there, post and cleared eventually by West Brom. A good start. And uh, you can, I'd love to see Keita getting in behind, causing problems. And that was a great example of that. The throw-in, though, into, into the area again to De Bruyne. Strike on goal. Hits the post this time. Two close opportunities. Two clear-cut opportunities as well. It's still nil-nil. And a corner kick, though. The pressure is building against this West Brom back line. Is there going to be an opening? Well, the corner comes to nothing. And it looks as if West Brom are going to finally deal with this. And they do. But so far, really good start from us. As Alexander Arnold plays it to Ngolan. The chances keep on coming. Ngolan into Firmino. Salah with the strike. Like left footed into the corner of the net a really good goal from Mohamed Salah of course as I mentioned last episode signed for Liverpool in real life if he produces this sort of performance I'll be very very pleased with him as uh, Nangoli you can see just slides it across for me now into Salah looks a little bit offside if you don't mind me saying so but even so back of the net that's what we're talking about a 1-0 lead so far and we're looking pretty good West Brom not had a chance in the game let's hope it stays like that for the entire game otherwise well, I start to get a little bit nervous a little bit worried so just we're fine half an hour gone Looking very good. Everyone seems fit. Nobody's playing particularly poorly. Let's see if we can keep this up. Another goal before half-time would be perfect. You can see, though, if we go on to 12 points, all of a sudden, we are right behind the contenders at the top as well. Uh, actually, interestingly, this season, all of the contenders, by and large, seem to be playing better than before. Um, things are going well, but I know you're capable of even better. And they look switched off. Brilliant news. We'll get assertive with them, then. I'm going to say, you weren't that bad, but I, leave you, I believe you have, I've got faith in you. And uh, there, you, there you are. He can still improve. They're kind of okay with it. Firmino, not having the best of times, though. He's feeling a little bit grumpy constantly. I'm not a fan of it. There's a chance we could bring maybe Mane on as the striker today and give him a go. He prefers to play as the false nine, but he's not too adept at playing a complete forward attack. I'm going to try something a bit radical here. Sadio Mane up top. If we look at it tactically, he's going to be okay there. And he's got a lot of pace about him. You get Salah in the team as well. He might be the solution to our striking woes with Aguero out. As soon as Aguero is back, that shouldn't be too much of an issue. But without him, Firmino has not really been putting in the shift you want from him. And now, is, is Mane going to get his opportunity to strike on goal? The ball's played through. Nangolan, a little bit fortunate. A slide tackle came in on Mane. Nangolan, though, getting in the box. A late arrival. You can see the run he makes from there. Drives forward into the box. Almost predicts the ball coming loose. 
and finishes it off really smartly as well. So, sort of through the keeper. Doesn't have time to react though. And it gives us the 2-0 lead. Early in the second half as well, of course, we're going to keep an eye on Kevin De Bruyne's fitness. Uh, still freshly back. In fact, it's not looking great for him right now. 6.3, not even the best of games. And you wonder if his fitness is a contributing factor to that. So we'll get Adam Lallana on, much like we did in the League Cup. And hopefully we should still be able to see this game out. No problemo as the kids are saying these days, or used to say when I was a child, to be fair. Don't know if they are saying no problem anymore. Probably not. Would, would be surprising to me. I have won four matches so far this season. Obviously lost the three. No draws so far this year. So, I mean, I think that's a good thing. I mean, I'd rather, I'd rather draw than lose, I guess. But I want games to be a little bit open because I think we've got the better players, which makes sense. To me, at least. <laughs> Should we make another change? Uh, Henderson's struggling a little bit. Emre Shan seems like the logical option. He was nearly getting the start today. So we'll bring him on. We could have played with Alton, of course. But we'll go with uh, Emre Shan. Of course, when Dyke's struggling a little bit for fitness, he, of course, played in the midweek fixture. Um, we've made a few changes, though. Hopefully, it doesn't come out to haunt us. I'm a bit of a proponent of, if you make changes on Football Manager, you're asking to, to have... The AI beat you, so I'm a little bit nervous immediately as West Brom now come forward with it. Ball played across to Darren Fletcher. I mean, you can see they've barely been in the game so far, not really had any opportunities as Rondon slides through uh, a pass to Fletcher, carries with a save, and it goes behind for a corner. West Brom obviously known for their set pieces, especially under Tony Pulis. Um, they've got some big old boys at the back who they're going to bring forward, I've no doubt. Morrison's going to put it in. It finds Nagolan at the front post. And it's cleared up to Sadio Mane, who we've not really seen too much of in a striking area. Is this going to be a counter attack or is this going to be one of those highlights that is just turned into nothingness? I fear it's going to be a highlight that turns into nothingness. Although, well, is it though, Ben? I, I'm oh what a, what a mind game this is forward to Salah and maybe not Salah to the byline pulled across to Mane he finishes it off how wrong was I that would be, that would have been a fascinating experiment by the way if I'd have played Sadio Mane as the striker all season of course he played a similar role for Southampton played up top as the lone striker occasionally I wonder if it would have worked I mean if Aguero's injury problems persist maybe Mane as the as the striker could be the solution imagine if that's what Klopp's gonna do. In real life. And nobody's aware of it. But he's going to play Mane as the striker through the middle. And that's why we're not buying one. How curious would that be? It looks like Neom's going to get himself sent off. 3-0 down away at Anfield. And now they're down to 10 men for the final 10 minutes. Never good. Can you imagine? Hmm. I mean, I'm not sure. I'm not sure Mane is the perfect striker by any means. But he's certainly got attributes to suggest that it caused teams a lot of problems. The ball's put in by Keita. I mean, fluffed a little bit by the goalkeeper. And uh, eventually cleared. That would be interesting. I would love to do a save. If I could have this save again, that might be something I would try, is to is to play Sadio Mane as the starting striker, just to see how good he is. Because attribute-wise, he's got lots of attributes that you'd really like in a striker. Very, very pacey, good dribbling, good first touch, finishing's good as well. So there'd, there'd be lots of reasons to play Mane as the starting striker. So this this could be a nice little experiment. And of course, with, it, with his pace, he opens up a lot of space for other players. You can see, actually... I mean, you're probably not going to see it from here, but you can see just before this move started building up that him and Salah have essentially swapped places right now. That gives us quite a nice fluidity in the centre. Salah, Salah then to Mane, and Mane eventually gets the goal. But it's Salah that came inside, of course, with Mane's pace and with his natural instinct to get out on that right-hand side. It gives space to Salah in the middle, playing as the inside forward. It's quite a nice dynamic there, the way it works out. Salah then gets it under control neatly, gives it to Sadio Mane and gets his second of the game and a 4-0 romp. But after our recent games against the likes of Palace... Uh, this is the sort of win you're, you're looking for, and it's been rather emphatic. 4-0 Liverpool then against West Brom, and that, my friends, is going to bring us to the end of the episode. We'll check out where we are in the league table. Hopefully you've enjoyed the episode, though. If you have, do drop a like on it. If you want to see some more, subscribe to the channel tomorrow, Real Madrid, or maybe t maybe later today. Keep an eye out. There may well be another one of these later today, and uh, I'll see you again soon. We love with care from me. Until next time, goodbye. I looked sort of over the glasses there. That was a bit intimidating. Mm -hmm.